In this lecture, I would like to go over some of the problem areas with pronoun usage that native speakers of the English language often have. One of the first problems is when we have compound subject. The pronoun is part of the subject, so it has to be in the nominative case. For example, Nate and I went shopping yesterday. He and I spent lots of money. You and I don't have the latest designs yet. The winners are he and I. Note that if you're not sure which pronoun to use, try each pronoun by itself in the sentence. The correct pronoun will sound right. Nate and me went shopping. You probably have heard people say that. Well, it's wrong because me went shopping is clearly wrong. Another example, the winners are him and me. So how about the winners are him? Does that sound right to you? Maybe. The winners are me? No, that doesn't sound right. The winners am me? No. So we know that we have to use the nominative case there. Another problem area with pronouns is when we have compound objects. Interestingly, when we often have compound subjects, people will often misuse the pronoun and use the objective case instead of the nominative case, even though it's the subject. But then the reverse happens when the pronoun is an object in the sentence and people then use the nominative case. For example, the memo praised you and she, some people might say, or forward the email to my boss and I. You hear this a lot. And I think the reason behind it is that people think that using the nominative case of the pronoun makes the sentence sound more sophisticated, but it's not. It's, it's a blatant error. We already learned about the objective case. So if we understand the sentence, the memo praised you and her, both you and her are direct objects. Therefore, we need the objective case, which is her, not she. Or she brought or bought her brother and me the same gift to indirect objects. She bought me the same gift. Forward the email to my boss and me. Here we have objects of preposition to, so we want to use the pronouns in the objective case. So once again, as a tip, if you're not sure which pronoun to use, try the pronoun by itself in the sentence. Forward the email to my boss and I is wrong because forward the email to I is clearly wrong. Another problem with pronouns is with appositives. An appositive is a noun or a pronoun that renames or explains another noun or pronoun. If the original noun or pronoun is in the nominative case, then the appositive also stays in the nominative case. Some examples. The best students, Carl and I, were given awards. Students is in the nominative case, it's the subject of the sentence, therefore the appositive, Carl and I, also need to stay in the nominative case. It's not Carl and me. Correct grammar is Carl and I. The boys in my family, Carl, Stephen, and I, all played basketball in high school. Again, Boys is the subject, it's in the nominative case, so the appositive Carl, Stephen, and I also have to be in the nominative case. It's not correct to say Carl, Stephen, and me. On the other hand, if the original is in the objective case, then the appositive must also remain in the objective case. So a couple more examples. The teacher gave extra help to two students. Cheryl and me. 
In this sentence, teacher is the subject, so teacher is the nominative case, and help is, uh, sorry, gave is the verb, and help is the object, and students is the indirect object, which is in the in objective case. So Cheryl and me refer back to students in the objective case. Therefore, we have to use the objective pronoun me. And finally, the doctor called two patients, me and that woman at the same time. Doctor is the subject of the sentence. Patience is the direct object of the sentence. So the appositive also needs to be an objective case. So it's me and that woman. Another interesting problem area with pronouns is when a first person plural pronoun is followed by a noun. In these cases, we have to look carefully at the positioning in the sentence. So, we lucky sailors. That is the subject of the sentence, so we know it's nominative. Therefore, we know we have to use the nominative pronoun we. We lucky sailors miss the storm, not us lucky sailors. If, however, the lucky sailors is the object of the sentence, then we say the storm missed us lucky sailors. Missed us lucky sailors is the object. And in the third example here, we have a prepositional phrase, so we know it has to be an objective case, for us engineers, not for we engineers. The job market looks promising. And again, a very, very easy way to figure out or test whether we should use us or we is take the noun out. So if you take the noun out, we miss the storm. It's very simple. You would not say us miss the storm. The storm missed us. Again, it's not a problem if we take out the noun. For us, the job market looks promising. Again, taking out the noun, it's clear what case we should use for the pronoun. Another problem area with pronouns is when we use pronouns in comparisons with the word than or as. If a comparison is between subjects, the sentence can be finished by repeating the verb. I am taller than he. Finish the sentence, I am taller than he is. Or, we don't invest as much as she. We don't invest as much as she does. Now, I know this sounds strange to many, many people because this is one of the most common mistakes that people make when they're native speakers. Most Americans, at least, would say, I am taller than him. Or they would say, we don't invest as much as her. That's bad English. We want a comparison in, in the nominative. Therefore, the pronoun has to be after the than or after the, the as. Also, in the sentences, has to be in the nominative case. And as I said, as a test, to make sure that it sounds right, finish the sentence with a verb. If the comparison is between objects, a verb following the pronoun does not make sense. For example, the law applies to you as well as me. We can't say the law applies to you as well as me applies. Makes no sense. Our boss paid Monica more than me. Our boss paid Monica more than me paid. So, in those cases, in we have the the comparison of you and me after the verb, so we know it's the object of the sentence. Monica, more than me, paid after the verb, so Monica, me are both in the objective case. Now, you might be saying, hey, wait a minute, Dr. Kitty. The sentence that you just used, Monica is 
the boss paid Monica more than me, I could also say the boss paid Monica more than I. Yes, you could. But it would mean something entirely different. In the first sentence, the boss paid Monica more than me means that the boss gave Monica more money than he gave to me. Whereas, the boss paid Monica more than I means the boss paid Monica money and I paid Monica money. So now the comparison is not between me and Monica. The comparison is between me and the boss. So again, you have to understand where, where your comparison is to determine what which pronoun you can use. So let's look at another example. Politics does not interest me as much as she. What does that mean? It means that I am more interested in her, in that woman than I am in politics. Finish the sentence. Politics does not interest me as much as she does. So, I now am making a comparison between politics and a woman. The second sentence, politics does not interest me as much as her. Now there's a comparison between me and her. And I'm saying that she is more interested in politics than I am. So you see, depending on the way the sentence is structured, changes the meaning. So when you're in doubt, again, finish the thought in the sentence and you will then know which comparison you're making.